purpose of the lab today is to find the charge to mass ratio of an electron. The setup we have here is called Helmholtz coils. And in this setup, the radius of one coil is equal to the um, distance between the, uh, the two coils. And this is done so that the magnetic field in everywhere in between the two coils is going to be uniform. And so we can show this by taking a compass. And as you can see that if we put it into the coils, that the, nettle, the needle stays steady. So here we have what is called a cathode ray tube. And in this tube, there is a cathode that electrons get emitted from. And also in this tube, there is argon gas. So when the electrons are emitted from the cathode, the, um, this excites the argon gas. And when the argon gas gets excited, then it emits a blue light. And we can use this blue light to trace the path of the electrons. So now we're going to be using the right hand rule to determine the force of an electron. In the right hand rule, your thumb is going to be the velocity of the electron, the direction of your fingers is going to represent the magnetic field, and the force is going to be represented by your palm. Now normally for a positive charge, the force would be going up, but since we're dealing with electrons which have, neg which have a negative charge, the force is going to be going in the opposite direction, which is down. So now let's trace the path of the electron. So as you see by these diagrams, if you have this situation here, the electron is going to go in a circular path like this. The equipment that you need for this um, experiment are the Helmholtz coils and the cathode ray tube, the power supply, and a voltmeter and an ammeter. So we're going to use uh, equation number three to determine the ratio of the charge of the electron to the mass of the electron where V represents the voltage, um, B represents the magnetic field, and R represents the radius. And you're going to get this equation from, uh, you're going to derive this equation by using uh, equation 1 and equation 2. So you're going to fix the current so that it is about 1.5 amperes. And as you can see, as you change the voltage, the radius of the circle changes. set the voltmeter so that it reads about 110 volts and as you see that at 110 volts um, it produces this electron path and so what you want to do is you want to find the radius of this electron path but to be more accurate about this you're going to first find the diameter and then divide by two so you're going to look at the two ends of the electron of the electron path circle and you're going to match it up with the image that uh, on the back mirror and you're going to take the reading of the diameter and then divide by two to find the radius Now what you want to do is find the magnetic field, and you can find this by looking at the bottom of the setup where it reads that, ma that the magnetic field is equal to 7.8 times 10 to the negative 4 times the current I. So now we're going to um, take more readings by changes, changing the voltage about 5 or 6 times so that you fill up your data table on your lab handout. Using the data table, you're going to construct a V versus R squared graph and find the slope. Um, using that value, you're going to plug it into this equation to find E over M experimentally and then compare it to the theoretical value using these values right here. And then you're going to find the percent error and lastly, you're going to answer the analysis questions in your lab.